I am very excited to be here with the legendary Mike Palm of Agent Orange. Mike, thank you so much for being with us yeah, here tonight. You. you guys just played a very epic show here at Slow Brew. Despite uh, a couple uh, bottles being tossed around, uh, what was your... It was just a water. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was in a cup. Okay, a cup. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I did get doused with water, which I don't really care that much. I mean, I do. Of course, everybody does. But yeah. I mainly, I mainly worry about things like my pedal boards, like stuff like that. That's some electronics. We use a lot of vintage stuff that's yeah. like uh, kind of hard to keep it working. And you know, we're a hard working band. We're touring all the time. Yeah. You know, rust is our enemy. So don't okay. throw drinks at us. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the few requirements of going to an Agent Orange show. Yeah. So definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, Mike, you guys. I mean, go back. 1979 your first single back then and yeah. then of course 1981 living in darkness back in the day, back in the day. Yeah. i wanted to ask you a little bit about kind of the scene there in the late 70s early there 80s there uh, wasn't a scene okay so you guys that's created that's one right we're from orange county so we're a little bit kind of separated from it you know and it so it took a little effort for us to get up there and kind of work our way into it you know but yeah. it was a good time for it because you know that was the first time when people started doing things themselves DIY you know whether it's records or yeah. booking shows yeah. you know and before that I think it was really hard it was hard for a band to really kind of get into those kind of situations you know it's not like now where you know you know they're willing to give unknown bands a try you know yeah. or give them a chance yeah. So uh, it was a good era. It was a good era. I mean, it's, it's you know, you can't choose your the time that you, you come up and through. But you know, but yeah. for us, I think it was it couldn't have worked out better really because yeah. we wanted to do it that way. We yeah. wanted to do it kind of DIY. We wanted to have more control over it, you know. And uh, so yeah. it was kind of good. It was a, it was a good time for that to happen. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Back then, true. I mean, you guys, did you have zines? What? How did, did you play in coffee shops? What were the early years of Agent Orange did, like? Actually, the first show we played was at a, it was kind of a, like a hippie coffee shop place in Santa Ana called uh -huh. the uh, Renaissance Cafe. Okay. And they had a, they had a gazebo set up in the corner there and the punk bands would set up in the gazebo. Okay. It was, it was very kids in the hall style. Okay. So, but yeah, cool. it was good. It was good though. And everybody was really cool. And they're, you know, they're all open to new ideas, yeah. you know, and that, that was what was cool about it back then. There were a lot yeah. of people that were just kind of open open to you know anything different you know it yeah. didn't it didn't have to conform you know it just whatever it was you know yeah. so it, yeah. it was good good a uh, good scene going on good stuff going on yeah. well of course and then i've heard, read that uh, a little bit later you know rodney on the rock you know k rock had um brought some increased exposure to you guys sure. and how influential was rodney kind of drawing attention to your guys' work yeah rodney having having his show on k rock and it was the type of thing like it, it actually broadcast far enough where even being from orange county yeah. we could tune in and hear what he had to, you know what he was playing and uh, a lot of those records were hand carried from from back from Europe or yeah, England, and yeah. and uh, and it, you know, and every every up and coming band, you know, mm -hmm. made made it a point to go find Rodney, whether it was at Denny's in Hollywood, yeah. have <laughs> have lunch with him and give him your new release. Yeah, and you know, he would usually play a lot of that stuff. You yeah. know, and of course, a lot of those bands coming up, you know, it was kind of exciting, like all the shows that were going on, and everything too. Yeah. But I mean, it was good that he picked that stuff up and played it on the radio. You know, yeah. that, that was a big deal. I mean, obviously, radio maybe it's not even as big a deal as it used to be. So, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. at the time we knew it was a big deal, you know, and it, yeah. for him to actually play us, like, it's always a big thing when you hear yourself yeah. on the radio, you know, and yeah. you that little, you know, everything. But he kind of went there, went, went during his show and knocked on the door. It was like Mr. Oh, really? Oz style, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's funny because we've done interviews with a lot of artists about John Peel at the BBC. Yeah. And I, it's my contention that, that Rodney is kind of like the American John Peel exactly. in terms he of really exposing is. people yeah. and, and I've heard that said before, too. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Mike, you know, but maybe John Peel is the is the English is, Rodney. There, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Man, he, he's blowing our minds yeah. tonight. Well, um, Mike, um, you know, um, for for better or worse, I mean, I think it's an accurate description. A lot of people put the label of skate punk on Agent Orange, yeah. and I'm kind of curious about to what extent was skate and skateboard culture um, truly an influence on you guys when you were coming up? Or was it something that was just, you were associated with, but you no, weren't actually? No, 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 we were definitely involved yeah. from that. I mean, I, at least I was, like even before the band, you uh -huh. know, like I had like a shop sponsorship thing, you oh, know, wow. skate, skated a few contests and, okay. you know, just kind of around, you know, okay. and just the whole thing about any action sports, and especially skateboarding is, yeah. you know, it just, it required a soundtrack that matched the intensity of what was going on, you know? Yeah. So jumping, you know, jumping over walls and skating people's backyard pools and stuff. Yeah. Like we needed something that matched up with it. And you know, that once again, dumb yeah. luck, we just came along right at the perfect time. Wow. It was a good match. Wow, excellent, excellent, very cool. Well, I remember I used to skate back in the mid eighties and I first was turned on to you guys when I was probably about nine or 10. I had uh, some neighbors that were um, skaters and I got my first Pal Peralta 
Vato yeah. Rats Bones deck. And I remember skateboarding with those guys listening to you guys, yeah, of course, yeah. Agent Orange. And uh, in the mid 80s, Vision put out an Agent Orange deck. Yeah, was that yeah. actually associated with, with sure, you guys? Yeah, it was. Pretty, yeah, Tell us sure a little bit about that. Um, well, you know, we kind of we were. Fr I was good friends with Lester Kasai, and uh -huh. he was they were filming that video. Okay. And they wanted to have us play in it, and he suggested it. So I got together with those guys. And we made a plan. We went out to Pipeline Skate Park and set up uh -huh. the pool and did uh -huh. the thing. And uh, we were printing posters that week for some shows we were going to do. We used to do two weeks at a time in Hawaii. Oh wow! So we were printing these posters in our rehearsal studio, uh -huh. and I just took a skateboard and printed the logo on the bottom of it. Wow. it was supposed you know from the poster. Wow. And uh, Brad from Vision saw the board at the photo shoot or the video shoot wow. and he was kind of like wow who makes your boards and I'm like you do now <laughs> <laughs> excellent because I'm sick of screening them by myself exactly <laughs> exactly well so it happened pretty quickly and, you know, within a week or two we had them made wow I just happened to look up do a little background checking on those decks I love the vintage you know there's actually yeah. a really cool skateboard museum in really? Morro Bay about oh, really? 15 miles wow. if you're next time you're in town yeah, man, I'll take you there north. and we'll, we'll yes, go check it out yeah. That um, sounds cool. Maybe they have that deck, but I went online cool. to look up what that vision deck was going for, yeah. and it's a pretty penny. Do it you is, happen yeah. to have a copy of that at home? I do. Yeah, you I do. have. I have one. I have one of the classic one. It's oh. you know black and blue and pink. Awesome. And, um, and that was one I, I kept in, in the you know in the shrink wrap and just you know put it away. All right. And I have one that the last board that I rode back then. It's a uh, like uh, lime green. Okay. And like uh, fluorescent pink, and it's pretty, it's an eyesore, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> and that board's still rideable, so I still wow. roll around a little bit just for the fun of it. You know? Awesome, man. But I didn't. I wish I would have kept them all. It was all the different colorways. Yeah. I used to do them purposely, like you know they do a like yellow. Variations. Or there's yeah. a white one. There's yeah. you know a bunch of different ones. And all those the weird color variations are kind of Vision's idea, and it's yeah. cool that they did that they mm -hmm. did it with all their boards yeah. and it makes certain color combinations like more collectible than others uh -huh, uh -huh. and there are certain ones that I just didn't I personally didn't really like so like okay. for instance the yellow one I never got one of those so okay, like, okay. I'm, I'm on the lookout okay. all right well if, <laughs> if you find one if you're watching this out there, one. yes you I will give it's you the Mike, one Mike Palm's personal <laughs> home phone number uh, we'll put that up on That's the screen right. and yeah. give him a call if you have let's the make up. a deal you know I do you up yeah he, he's, <laughs> he's the man he's the man right on well Mike anything exciting going on you guys are touring just like crazy yeah, um, yeah. you know any anything in the future any plans for some new material being put out I mean what can, yeah, what can we're always talking about that for? you know and it's one of those things it's like we're having so much fun on the road right now it looks yeah. like we're gonna be out for six weeks oh, wow. uh, coming up here it was okay. originally supposed to be we, we said let's do a, a northwest tour because uh -huh. we just did the northeast uh -huh. and uh, the northwest tour turned into uh, all the way up into Canada and we're going to uh -huh. zigzag back and forth across uh, you know the, the, the top states uh -huh. in Canada all okay. the way to the east coast so okay. Okay. it's just going to be a big lap around the United States and Canada. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very, yeah. very cool. It's going to be cool. a fun one. Very cool. Like when you were coming up I mean before 1979 I mean who who inspired you? I mean the punk movement uh, in, in Britain, the yeah. Ramones, what got you, well, what you inspired what? you to pick up a guitar? Oh well, for starters, my oldest brother worked at the Fender guitar plant. Okay. He was a, he tested amps as they came off the assembly line. Okay. So instruments were always around, and, and my you know my brother's always you know in doing stuff like that, and you yeah. know it's bands. And, you know, my cousin was in a surf band back okay. in the day, and okay. you know even though I was really young, I mean that kind of thing had an influence, you know. Yeah. And um, like I said, guitars were always laying around the house. Kind of couldn't avoid it, really, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know just. All different music that kind of my older brothers kind of turned me on to, mm -hmm. and then kind of pre-punk, right before punk happened, I kind of was hanging around with some guys that ended up um, the form of the band Berlin, and uh, the drummer Dan Van Patten turned us on to a lot of good music, right. well, Ultra actually, Vox, okay. Tangerine Dream, Kraftwerk, right. stuff right. like that. Right. Import a lot of import stuff that yeah. you know. Once again, it was obscure and weird yeah. to most people, wow. but you know, well, that's obviously a, very interesting stuff. So you know, that's a very interesting connection, Mike, because yeah. we are. Um, I dare say friends with Terry Nunn, but we've interviewed oh, Terry twice awesome. and um, cool. and really enjoyed just talking really to her cool. about the history of really Berlin cool. and how influential yeah. those guys were really amazing, especially the early they how in, the influence yeah. that they yeah. had back yeah, then. They were. Yeah. yeah, they were, and they were to us too. And yeah. in, in ways, and even before Terry, uh -huh. they actually they were a power pop band That's without true. synthesizers before that with a male vocalist, wow. Ty, okay. Ty, Ty, Tyron Cobb. And, okay. um, and they were, that's one of the bands that, I mean, obviously, uh, Dan Van Patten produced our first seven inch, Bloodstained uh -huh. seven inch, and, you know, took us into the studio and everything. So, you know, they, they helped us out a lot. They definitely, 
definitely good friends of ours. All right, very cool, very cool. Well, I guess that's about it for me. Uh, any questions for me, uh, Mike? <laughs> um, or any questions for the fans out there? Uh, they can't really respond in this yeah, channel, yeah, yeah. so, you know. No, I don't think I really have any questions. I think I know okay. pretty much what's going on everywhere at every time, at all times. He's he, Mike, Mike Palm, the, no om, the omniscient one. Thank you so much for your time. I'm Thanks at, a lot. Thank Thanks you, for hanging. Thank you. Had a good time. All right. See you around.